Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brie Tanache and in today's video I'll be giving you some advice about applying to pharmacy school. So it's September, why am I giving you advice about applying to pharmacy school when we all know that the deadline for applications is in January? Well, that's because you need as much time as possible to make sure that you have the best application to help you stand out to your pharmacy schools of choice. And the reason for doing it early is because you need time to really think about the pharmacy schools you're applying to, you need time to gain some experience, and you also need time to write the best personal statement to help you really stand out as a candidate. So without further ado, let's get into the tips that I've got for you. So the best place to start off with is to consider the requirements that pharmacy schools have about what A-levels they prefer for you to have done. Typically, most universities will require you to do at least one science in your A-levels. Usually that's chemistry or biology. Some universities will require you to do an additional science and they'll accept maths as an additional science, but usually we'll expect you to do something like biology and chemistry or biology and physics or, chem or a combination of any of those. As long as there is one science and usually an additional science or maths, then they'll usually accept that. So that's usually one or two sciences for your A-levels. And then for your third one, you can do pretty much whatever you are interested in. So for myself, I did chemistry and biology at A-level. I also did English language at A-level and I took history as my AS level. So as you can see, you can pretty much do anything with your last two subjects, but make sure that you keep some sciences in there to give you a better chance of getting into as many schools as possible make sure that you take a look at the UCAS link to your university of choice to really clarify exactly what they're looking for. But this is typically what most people will want. In terms of the UCAS points, this usually varies university to university, so you can't give a clear cut answer. And when you convert that to A-level results, that usually translates to about between three Bs and three As. Sometimes some universities want as much as an A star and two As. So it really depends on the kind of school you're going to, but usually anything between three B's and three A's is usually the typical ask for a pharmacy student. So I know that wasn't very great in terms of requirements and that's because there's so much variation because there's a lot of pharmacy schools but where we can kind of streamline things is when it comes to the application process. So when it comes to the application you need to write a personal statement. In your personal statement you need to highlight some qualities that pharmacists are expected to have. So take time to research whether that's on YouTube videos or whether that's on the NHS website. I made a video not too long ago talking about my experience as a pharmacist and what I thought pharmacy school and pharmacy practice was like. So if you want to know a little bit more about the kinds of things you do as a pharmacist, then take a look at the video and it's linked right above in the cards and it's also going to be linked at the end of the video. Pharmacy is an evolving profession, much like all the other professions in healthcare. And that's because our population is growing and our population is aging. That means we have a lot of different challenges that we face day to day. So when you're writing your application form, think about this. Think about the idea that as a pharmacist, you need to be someone who's teachable, somebody who's ready to learn, who's interested in a changing and evolving profession. You also need to show good communication qualities. And that's because as a pharmacist, you have communication with a spectrum of people. That's patients, colleagues and other people in other organizations and that could be situations that are difficult having difficult conversations but also trying to communicate big ideas in a simple and understandable way so just as I'm listing off these things you could maybe think about examples when you've shown this so in your application form make sure that you identify that you understand that pharmacists do this kind of thing and then show examples of how you've showcased these kind of skills and if there are some skills that you haven't had the opportunity to do, maybe you haven't had much opportunity to lead, you could talk about how you look forward to that and how you've got other qualities that are important as a leader. Maybe you're a great team player. Maybe you're somebody who's really good at influencing a mood in a team. Maybe you're somebody who's organized. So just point out those things. Honestly, just think about your experiences in school or your experiences where you work and you'll be able to put it together. You'll be able to put it together. A really good way to also spice up your application and really stand out is to get some experience. It would be really good to get some experience in an actual pharmacy or in, an, in a hospital or any setting where there's pharmacists. If you're really, really lucky, you might be able to get some experience in an industry. But it's not 
imperative that your experience is in a pharmacy. It could be that your experience is in a different organisation that can help you as a future pharmacist. For example, a lot of my colleagues had experience as healthcare assistants in a nursing home. I personally went to a pharmacy and I just asked them, hi, my name is Bree. I would really like some experience so I can really learn about this profession and decide if it's really for me. So I just walked into a community pharmacy uh, very, quite close by to my school and just asked them if I could shadow for a couple of days. I also went to a pharmacy in town and spoke to the manager and I shadowed for a couple of days. I took some time to go to a hospital and asked if I could shadow a doctor for a little bit. Um, so just doing things like that, you can ring your local GP. I know it's a bit more stressful now with the pandemic, but just ask around, you never know what you might be able to get. Some other experience that I had was some experience that the school was offering. I took a sports leadership course where I taught younger kids in the school different sports and I um, led activities and those things were really important to showcase my leadership skills and to showcase my communication, uh, my dedication, my ability to stick to something and complete it. So it doesn't have to be healthcare related, it could be something like that. I know some people took some time off to just travel and work in different um, environments that had nothing to do with healthcare, maybe it was like adventure centres and things like that. So you can really draw on skills that can be applicable in different settings and use those to your advantage. So the next thing to really consider is choosing your school. This is something that I didn't give any thought to until it was literally just a few weeks before the application deadline. I didn't know that universities delivered their information in different formats until I came across some university students who let me know just how differently their universities were delivering information to them. So if you're anything like what I was like at that time, you might be thinking, what do you mean? What I mean is not every university delivers information in lecture form. Shocking, right? But that's not a bad thing. So what you need to think about is have some time to be introspective. Think about yourself as a person and as a student. How do you best acquire information and how do you best process information? So for myself, I know that I learn best by hearing and by doing. So when it came to choosing my university of choices, I made sure to stay away from the more traditional kinds of delivery of information. So now as an adult learner, because when you go into university, you're now an adult learner, most of your information will be self-directed. You'll be given links to online books or real books in the library, and you'll be given some information to go and read by yourself or videos to go and watch or things like that. So you will have to take responsibility about how you learn. So think about that. Think about how you're going to study. But also the university has some onus to deliver some information to you from the lecturers. So in my particular university, we didn't have lectures at all. Our pharmacy school structure was team-based learning. So for me, I was always with a team and I stuck with that team the entire year and we would learn things together. It sounds a bit complicated, but look into it. Otherwise this video will be really, really long and it's not really about that. But what I'm trying to say is, if you're somebody who learns maybe visually and through hearing, maybe a lecture-based university is for you. If you're someone who's more practical, perhaps a, more, a university that offers more practical sessions will be for you. If you're somebody that learns in a team and you like to talk things through, maybe a team-based learning structure is best for you. Other things to consider when it comes to university, think about the location, okay, because you're going to be at university for at least four years and if you do the sandwich course of pharmacy, if your university offers that, then you'll be at university for five years. That is a long time. So think about what's going to be best for you as an individual. Think about the location. If you're a spiritual person, are there any nearby places for you to go and practice your religion? Think that supports your spiritual development. If you're somebody that really enjoys socialising, think about what's around the area. Is it a more secluded kind of university or that are there amenities and things to do? What are the kind of social clubs that they offer? What is diversity like if you're going to feel a bit alone and a bit excluded? Just consider these things because your course is going to be quite long and you want to have the best experience you can have and the best learning you can have as well. I would recommend that you go to an open university day because sometimes you might be able to get a better experience of what it's really going to be like living there and you can get 
live testimonials from the students who are there. You can ask as many questions as you'd like. If you don't get this opportunity, you will get the opportunity when you go and do your interviews, given that the pandemic allows for us to do that. But you will have the opportunity to go to the university and to speak to the people in person and get a good vibe of what's really going on there and if it's for you. So now let's talk about getting into pharmacy school. How do you get in? Well, that is through interviews. I don't know of any pharmacy school that takes people in without interviews, so expect an interview. Now, in terms of how the interview is actually going to be structured, depends on the school that you're applying to. I had some interviews where we had a carousel type of structure, and that's where you go from one station to another station, and there's one interviewer or two interviewers, and they ask you various kinds of questions. In the carousel interviews that I had, I had various kinds of questions. In some stations, I was asked more situation or scenario based questions so that was more to do with my personality and how I would respond to certain challenges or pressures in the workplace or how I would respond to colleagues who are a bit more challenging in the workplace then I was asked problem solving questions and how I would prioritize those in other stations I was asked things more to do with why would I apply to pharmacy school where do I see myself in the future what do I think the pharmacy profession is going to be like in the future and how has it changed over time so it just really depends on the university that you're going to. I was also asked about things that I look forward to and what made me go for this, why not another profession and just things about my life and what's led me to this and then questions about the things I'd written in my personal statement. So it can really vary. I would suggest speaking to somebody who's the career counsellor. Maybe you're in university and you're thinking of changing courses, speak to that person. If you're in a sixth form or you're in a college, then speak to the counsellor who advises you guys on how to apply to universities. They usually have a ton of books that go into the kinds of questions you'll be asked. Um, otherwise, look on Google, the trusted Google search, <laughs> because there'll be people who've written down questions that they were asked recently. So don't, don't be afraid to have a, a little bit of a, a look. Typically, interviews will last anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. So if an interview is usually shorter, that's because there's usually other things that you'll be expected to do on your interview day. So in some universities, I had maybe about a 15 to 20 minute interview and then I had other tests to do. In those tests, I had a chemistry, biology test, and then I had a maths test. And these were like a maths test where I didn't need a calculator. These were just mental arithmetic and working out really. Um, so yeah, um, there weren't anything too difficult, so don't stress yourself out too much, but they, those do count and help towards getting you into the university. One of the universities had a really, really interesting um, station where they asked you personality tests, and in there they had questions like, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Go into detail about why you'd be that animal, what makes that animal really good, what makes it really bad, like really random stuff like that, so expect the unexpected. So I recently stumbled on my personal statement to pharmacy school, so that's something you'd be interested and hearing so you know a bit about what you should put in there and get a bit of a gist and feel free to put that in the comment section down below so I can know that that's something you're interested in. So we've come to the end of the video I hope those points were really interesting and useful for you best of luck applying you can do it don't be afraid be yourself if you're really really interested in this have a look around and honestly apply the tips that I've given to you and you will do just fine I wish you all the best of luck and if you enjoyed this video then please give the video a thumbs up so I know you enjoy these kind of videos make sure you subscribe for more videos and give me a, some suggestions in the comment section for any other fancy related videos that you'd be interested in so Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.